Hello, welcome back. I'm your host, Paul James. Today, I'm joined by Matt Phillips and dancing Damo Camilleri. How are you, gents? Oh, yeah. Let Damo dance. I wish you could see how good my feet were. Like, unfortunately, we're stuck with this. So Damo's preparing his dinner while we do this episode. He's not going to eat because background noise is shocking like that. But he's going he's gonna to prepare a meal. He can tell us all about it as we go, I'm sure. But after a year where things kind of went to shit, E3 is back. In a slightly different form, but E3 is back. It's going all digital this year. And so we thought before we get to you know some episode, presumably in a few weeks, where we kind of make some predictions that are likely to be wrong, as is our way, might discuss kind of some of the changes and what do we think it means as E3 saved because everyone thought it was dying, all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, before we really dive into, I guess, the finer details, are we are we happy that E3 is coming back? Not really. You're not? I honestly, I honestly forgot about it until they said, oh, e three's back this year. I thought, oh, yeah. I forgot about it. See, I'm stoked that it's back. And not just because, like, I'm, you know, games media and all that sort of thing but one of the things that gave me the shits about last year and i mean jeff Keighley did a great job with his you know summer game fest but there was so many events over months where everyone was announcing all their stuff instead of what e3 used to be and what it seems like e3 is going to be this time which is everything's kind of now those those three or four days are crazy but um you know pretty much everyone outside of sony activision and konami which I'm sure we'll probably discuss at some point, everyone except them is going to be crammed into like a four or five day window. And that's, I feel like that's just perfect because people just got know, exhausted by the fact that there was a conference every couple of days and some of them would be big and others were just kind of rehashes of what you saw before. I'm pretty happy with the, the change. Personally. So you're like, uh, <clears throat> you're like the wrestling nerds that are like stoked that WrestleMania is going back to one day next year. Because, like, if you're a content creator, you've just got one day to focus on instead of, like, a four-day weekend I mean, a where you're bit. just constantly going at it. A little bit. I mean, the, the, I think as far as kind of create, you know, whether it's content or articles, I kind of didn't mind the fact that it was spread out because you'd always have something to put out there. So I guess it could kind of work both ways in that respect. I won't I won't speak to the wrestling. But, um, no, just more, more as a consumer of it and kind of wanting to get my, my fix of game news. I mean, this was kind of... I guess it was kind of your WrestleMania style thing, where just everything was going on all at once. Like it was just, I mean, in the case of E3, it was like a few days, but it was just a few days of just wall to wall stuff. And there was like, you couldn't, <laughs> I'm glad you're still in the video with your dancing there. Um, like there wasn't a minute break. Like there was always something that was just this high for a few days, <laughs> for a few days. Um, so I, I really loved that. And I'm kind of glad we're getting back to that in an extent, to an extent. Fair what about enough. what about the fact that it's going digital? Obviously, it's kind of necessary because of COVID. Do we think that might help at all? Maybe no, less cringy it's stage be interesting. presence. Well, it's going to be interesting to see the no crowds. How it's all going to be because you're not going to hear all the big claps and the bigs. No, hundred percent big will. You'll get the woo guy. They'll still they'll like employ a woo guy. Just one guy <laughs> sitting in a chair. <laughs> yeah. by himself. Remember the Xbox guy. Woo! woo. 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 You know, you know, there's um, like where there's not crowds at the moment, like the cardboard cutouts and stuff like that. Oh and, yeah, uh, it gives a nice effect. The Denver Broncos but are the best ones. For something like this, like, so if X, like, it would, it's going to be such a social media game, and that's going to kind of be a really annoying, like, you know, hashtag Xbox yes or whatever, some bullshit like that. Hashtag Xbox E right? three was always their thing. So just so that they can see, oh, this is trending, this is good. So it's going to be this competition of what's more trending so that they can narrate what they're going, what they do. Like, who, like you know, it's like uh, Xbox's cloud drive system and being always online. Like that just got warmed. But that was because like not only online presence, but like there and there and the happening. So without the there and the there, like you're going to be completely focused online. So everyone's going to have to change their game to be, all right, we need to generate as much like trending stuff to see what we what we have to do to adjust. You know what I mean? So it's it's going to be hashtag so annoying gameplay. just the, the amount of hashtag. <laughs> we're Xbox and we're here to show you gameplay. What's that, a cutscene? Yeah, we'll give you 50 of those. You, you want cutscenes? You got it. You want you want gameplay? First party it's games. a good thing we bought Bethesda because we're not going to show Want some first party games? Shit. Maybe ask next year. 
and they'll <laughs> talk to their cardboard cutout crowd of Halo, Master Chief, and just Marcus Phoenix because that's all they have in first party. Oof, baby, oh, yeah, just, there'll be the entire there'll be the entire like Skyrim NPC selection in the Xbox crowd. Doom and guy. there'll just be sweet rolls as well. Cutouts of sweet rolls being good, stolen. Good, good, Needs more sweet rolls. I still remember that and, PAX where they were giving out sweet rolls. That was a bit much. And fridges. Okay. We're waiting for the Xbox Fridge. fridge. I'm ready with my... like. I hope that's an E3 announcement. I'm ready to click pre-order on that shit. That, It'll cost that's way too much. That's all it is. That's, that's all Xbox is going to just show. No games, just fridges. Fridge. Just no wipers. games, just a fridge. Just... just Smoke, the door opens, the smoke comes out, and out rolls a fridge. <laughs> Terry Crews and The Rock carrying fridges no, on their Terry, Terry no, Crews has Terry... got bigger things to fry. He's trying to revive Mother 3. Let's... Terry Crews in a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Crews special edition Xbox fridge. <laughs> um, I, I guess we, we've touched on Xbox. How do, given that Xbox is going to be there and Bethesda is going to be there as well, how do we think that's going to work? Is Bethesda going to tr- like keep its old conference on its own, or are we going to see like a three-hour conference now from Xbox because Bethesda is going to take like an hour themselves? Oh, I really hope we just recently separate. had a three-hour Xbox presentation. It was that indie thing, and it was shit house. Yeah, let's hope not. Hopefully, the they're separate. Bethesda could just have yeah. their stuff, so we just don't have to sit through three hours of. Ref- electronic fridges and god knows what else xbox is going to bring i mean i wouldn't World rule premiered. out i wouldn't rule out them going okay we've we've done ours now over like now if you you know switch over here to join our friends from bethesda and, you know and you'll see this and like i wouldn't be surprised if the shows literally run back to back but i hope that they are kind of still technically separate yeah i think that's the upside to it that there's no walking that is nice no walking uh, no walking. You could just sit perfect. on your couch, go get up, go to the fridge, come back, and voila, next conference. Instead of walking from what we've heard from E3 is go from one side of the t- one side of the city to the other side of the city in 15 minutes. I mean, that was that yeah. one or two bad years in like 2007 or eight where they completely just boned everyone who went there. But um, there's no like waiting. There's no waiting room either hey wait here first then come in yeah and it would be worse now it'd be like wait get covid screened get temperature checked come in sign the waiver move on that'd take a long time yeah so on those that aren't going because again like we'll we'll say we'll we'll have a predictions episode about what you know the various publishers are going to do i'm sure but um the fact that sony konami and Activision aren't going to be attending in any way, or at least so far, but I don't expect that to change. What do we make of that and the fact that they're not going? Well, I think they're smart. Go on. Or well, they've well, got nothing there's... to show again. You reckon PlayStation's got nothing to show? Yeah, they've, just, they've used it all already. Well, they just save it when it's actually ready to be shown. Like, their stocks are holding. They think, like, Xbox need to show stuff need to do it where playstation are like hey you know what's coming and we'll show it when it's ready. yeah we've got god of war like, it's what's coming the point what's what's the point of e3 for like when we show off like we're not going to build new techs there's no new tech coming it's the games that we're here for so when they come you'll buy our stocks again like you know what i mean it's a it's a weird balance they're smart and i'm not paying the money to you know hold a non-live conference you know and give whatever uh fees they have to give to the esa yeah that's i think the thing with sony in particular i think they've not wanted to go anywhere near because i mean sony you know compared to microsoft they're not even close to as profitable as microsoft are um and i think they'll try and save every dollar they can and i think like given they've already got their state of plays which is you know just their nintendo direct thing anyway they're probably looking going well we don't need e3 i mean remember they made this decision they were already out of E3 2020 before COVID hit. They'd already said they weren't going to be attending. So, um, weren't they, there the, they weren't there the year before either, were they? No, 2019 was their last year because they had that really awkward one. You, you spoke about oh, people, yeah. you spoke about walking before, but that was the one where all the media and 
and influences that were in the room. They had to walk from one set, which was The Last of Us, to another set, yeah, the, which was the, then Ghost of Sushi. The Ghost Wire. Else. Ghost Wire trailer. Yeah. I remember it now. And it took. That we yeah. haven't seen since. It was Ghost. No, that it was, was Ghost awful. of Sushi because they had the guy with the flute and everyone took the piss out of the guy playing the flute. Oh, yeah. That wasn't there something of. The Ghostwire one was the that epic one, at, at specifically a Bethesda show because it's a Bethesda game. Oh, um, where Sony's a little Sony. The then creative director Ikumi Nakamura to come out. She was amazing, and then she like quit two weeks later. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is a great like, game. Nick mute it. I quit. <laughs> I'm out. See you guys. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know the the Sony one. I feel like. Yeah, Damo's kind of right. They don't necessarily need it, and I think it's a case of they might still pop up though at E3 time. They might just have a state of play during that week, but they won't have to pay a set yeah. to the ESA because they're doing it on their own bat. I guess I guess it kind of makes sense. Uh, they could still do it. They could still steal E3 despite not attending E3. EA doesn't technically attend it. You know, when things were actually face to face and people could actually attend, they were literally across the street. They just booked out a spot across the road what? for their EA. Oh players. yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, just outside. And Xbox technically wasn't nothing. attending either. I mean, they they'd have stuff on the show. Uh, no, actually, I don't think they even had stuff on the show floor in recent years. They because they've got the Xbox Theater, which is again like right next door. Um, so they would set up in there, and if you wanted to play Xbox stuff, it was a two minute walk, and you got to go jump into that. So there's a few that already kind of moved away, and I think now that it's all digital, PlayStation could easily just slot something in with no worries. What about Konami and Activision though? What Activision got just Warzone. God. That's it. That's, what? Two hours of COD, that's it. That's a sticky point for uh, people. Right? Because they just, they just um, got Toys for Bob, the team who did Crash Bandicoot 4. They've turned them into a COD studio. Oh, no. Toys for Bob is a... Yeah. They're now working on COD. Uh-huh. Now I think it's probably to help out with Warzone. But there, uh, there's no just, clear team. anymore. Just Warzone. Crash. Yeah. Just Crash in first person. <laughs> oh, jeez. Shooting Wumper Fruit at... Shooting turtles and God, those are old ears, seals. <laughs> Davos just burned himself. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> do you want me to call? Do we call triple guys, zero? Ladies and gentlemen, no. if you're listening to the audio feed, go check out the video because you just saw Damo get a first degree burn. <laughs> this is why we don't play with hot oil, kids. While podcasting. Mother. Ah, uh, shit. That was good. You okay? Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, no, Matt, Maybe, Matt, Matt, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about right, the though. COD. Put, put him off with the COD and Crash Bandicoot. And the Crash Bandicoot first-person shooter. Uh, no, I think no, right. like, they've, they've taken all their studios that weren't Blizzard teams. They've completely taken off anything that's not COD, basically, these days. They might be building other teams, but like Vicarious Visions went to go work on Diablo 2, the remaster. Four? Oh, uh, they're doing they're doing the remaster and then is it, Toys for Bob. Is it the mobile do... game? There's, no, there's, the there's mobile like a game. Chinese mobile team or whatever that are working on Immortal. Then you've got Vicarious Visions that have gone to do Diablo two, and then you've got you know Blizzard proper that's doing Diablo four. But you know, ignoring kind of the Blizzard side of it because at least they do have a few teams working on different things because you know there's Overwatch two out there still somewhere as well. Um, the, the actual Activision side, yeah, I think, like, you're right. They're doing nothing except COD these days, so it's pretty bad. Damo, do we need to call an ambulance for you? <laughs> no, Does... it's not that bad. Look, <laughs> there's nothing really there. Just Tomorrow I might wound. have blisters, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> this is the risk you make when you uh, step into the kitchen. We, we peer pressured him into doing a pod uh, doing the podcast while cooking dinner. This is this is our punishment. We've killed it. The old classic, go on then. <laughs> and then there's the Konami you part, which they were actually on the list to participate, and then they bailed last week. They said they had nothing to show. I'm like, well, why did you put your name on in the first place? That or they yeah, clearly they had something maybe they forgot. Hearing. Yeah, maybe just maybe it was just some intern that just went, "Well, work experience kid, yeah, we'll sign up." And we'll you're go going, to you dickhead, you dickhead. We don't have anything. We don't make games anymore. It's just pachinko machines, and that's we used it. to have metal. Yes, we used to have metal gear, but Kojima left. Yeah. Now it's trash. Yeah, now it's all gone to shit. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's those who aren't attending. Everyone else is. You know, Nintendo will be there with Nintendo Direct, Xbox and Bethesda we've spoken about. EA will be doing their thing in EA Play. They're, they're leaning into kind of influences this year. So you've got um, 
you've got three actual hosts of E3 as opposed to, you know, everyone just having their press conferences or whatever, maybe depending on who you tuned into. So like Jeff Keighley, when he actually did stuff for them, he'd have like his YouTube live at E3 and he'd have interludes, but most people didn't go for that. Like they just tune into IGN because they were streaming whatever conference this year. It's an actual formal thing where they've got Greg Miller, who's kind of heading the whole thing. Um, and then a couple others that are like, Hey, Greg get banned. Yeah. Isn't there a whole thing where Craig gets banned because somebody like stole his ticket or something? So they incorrect. Uh, yeah, someone. Yeah, he'd already finished and left E3, and someone, I guess, at the hotel that he was at, stole his ticket and then tried to slide into E3, and he had to confirm to the ESA after he'd already been banned that he'd already left, and it wasn't him at all. So yeah, the last E3 he attended, and then um, now all of a sudden, what did he get banned for? Because. What did, uh, what did because the, uh, it was someone did, tried to get in using his like it, they oh, were saying oh you're trying to share you know it's non-transferable. I thought it was like some fake Greg doing something bad that got him kicked out. Well, the bad thing was yeah. trying to get in, but um, oh, with someone with a pass that wasn't his. But yeah, he had to prove that he'd already left the state. Sorry, yeah, or, yeah not the state. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where it is in relation to Maybe the conference. The he left. He left. Oh, he, when I, he was out of the city. When I heard that, I heard that, like, you know, I was like, oh, is that because he took his shirt off and encouraged everyone else to take their shirts off? Took his shirt off and put a Spider-Man mask on. Yeah. I mean, they they ping him for that and then they let Dr. Disrespect walk around into the toilets and record people, so... Okay, let's not talk about that. That's Twitch for you, I guess. They've never confirmed any of that. Not anymore. Um, Well, yeah, he's not on Twitch anymore, but... um, Or is he? Or is he back? Uh, he, he's on YouTube. He got banned from Twitch. Oh, yeah, okay. For so, some yeah, weird yeah. reason. We, no one knows. Yeah, right. I don't know. Str- strange, like, influences at the top level. Strange shit goes on there. Um, yeah, Gre- Greg's going to be hosting it. They've uh, Clearly, they've worked out the issues there. There's a couple others. I think that's kind of cool. That they're getting personalities to kind of do it rather than just let it be the corporate suits or, or Jeff Keighley for as good the as he is. That- he doesn't have a big personality. He doesn't have that big energy. The people that don't get it. Yeah. You get the people that are passionate and make it actually watchable. Like, Do what Ubisoft does. Just get big name celebrities to host it for them. Oh, I like that. Oh, shit. What's his name? I mean, the, the guys from South Park hosted it once. They, hosted, yeah, they, they promoted of... their own game. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Man. They just got on there like, we don't really have time for this shit. So, uh, yeah, so like, we got a game. game. Would you like a game off. that you have to pay for? And all this, that pretty much the mockery of just game in general like in this game and everyone's like yeah woo yeah I want that game like wow they can say anything and everyone will celebrate yeah pretty no much no matter what I, I'm, I'm hoping that the woo guy's there like they just have one person especially during the Xbox thing one person that's just going woo in the background just to you know a bit of a throwback to the, the bad old days of E3 <laughs> <laughs> let's celebrate the bad times yeah Ridge Racer. Oh, yes, a good Ridge Racer reference would be sweet. I can get around that. That would be the opening. I just want EA to rock up and be like, look, we know we're the worst company in the world as voted to the people. Um, So we're bringing back EA Sports. It's in the game. Also, EA Big. And any other EA EA in the game references... For also, just a reminder game. that yeah. Escape 4 is back and peace out. See you guys. That's it. EA All Sports. I want. Like, EA can <laughs> make a whole, a three seat, like a 180 on their on their bullshit if they just go, <sighs> EA Sports. It's in the game. It's like, mm, drop the mic and you. Just get the guys oh. to just walk out and just say it and then just walk off and bring back Tiger Woods Golf. I think they are. Either 2K or EA is partnered with Tiger Woods because 2K. because yeah. then just 2K. after it just after it Tiger Woods got in an accident or whatever. Yeah, 2K. Oh, and it was then 2K. you have to pay a hundred dollars to get Tiger Woods in the game. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the 2K right. way. <laughs> any any last thoughts on the E3 thing coming back? Again, we'll we'll be doing some predictions probably in a in a few weeks once we get to close to the E3 starting. <sighs> It's interesting because it's like one of those things where it's like it doesn't need to exist anymore because we showed last year it doesn't need to exist. If you know you want Games Week, sure that'd be cool where all these people come together to the conferences and we just get a you know yeah that's it we just get all the games that are coming out 
all the trailers and then you have private meetings for your stock market of people and you you know your corporates and stuff like that but like it just so it came without like the patch. live crowd there you don't have that the yeah, beauty the Keanu Reeves moment was yeah, yeah exactly you don't have that like you know it's cool that every time Nintendo do something and it's like it's like ha, 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 ha. but I'm not there I watch I watch it an hour later when they release all the trailers I don't care about you know this is in the game and we will be playing a new smash character now it's like no no talky just give me give me what i want you know what i mean it doesn't need to exist anymore yeah i but think the, I the way they present it, it would be super important like if they if they all go down that nintendo, nintendo direct path where it's you know like disembodied voice and it's just the net game to game to game to game with just some yeah monotonous voice in the background kind of bridging the gap that's not going to be overly fun but if you do lean into the you know the Gregs and those sort of people to kind of bridge stuff between conferences, maybe even between some of the actual like within the conferences themselves, that could make it all right. I think to your yeah. point, Dave. I think the way they choose to deliver it's going to be super important. Yeah. Matto, any other thoughts? Know. Yeah, I'm saying with Dave, it's going to be interesting to see how it all goes. As a media person. So I've spoke. I've tried to talk without you know focusing on my kind of perspective uh, in terms of the media side of it for a while. But slipping the media hat on, this could be the closest I ever get to actually attending E3 because I mean a lot of um, well no because like a lot of uh, what do you call it? like just in the year since COVID's kind of kicked in, there's been a lot of demo opportunities for people using this platform called Parsec, really high end. Um, I heard of Parsec today actually. Yeah. Very funny. Um, Isn't that a Star just, Wars reference? I think it's probably by design, yeah. Um, super, like, high end, oh, on the high end of kind of streaming stuff. Um, <laughs> and people are basically just streaming, pretty, the, streaming the demos across. I'm oh, no. almost 100% sure George Lucas did not know what a parsec was when he used it as a reference. Tool. No, he made it up. And now it's become... I mean, there's, no, there's people... it was a unit of measurement. It was a unit of measurement. He used it thinking that it was something else. Like, he probably thought it was a measurement of speed. <laughs> it's like, no, it's measurement of distance, which is thing. I think that's what Parsec's all about in this sense, that you could have me playing, uh, I don't know, Guilty Gear or whatever like that against somebody in America and it looking almost lag-free so that I can actually have a decent enough netcode to play a fighting game online. Yeah. You know? So what, so what they've been doing the with a lot of looks events, like it's gone. Yeah. So what they've been doing with a lot of events for certainly some of the biggest outlets in the last twelve months is they've been allowing people to get their opportunities with hands on for upcoming game via Parsec where they're just streaming the game to you directly to you so you don't have some of the other kind of hiccups mm. that can kind of come along the way. It's a it's a just one to one sort of thing. And I, I mean they've recently like I'll get my first chance to have a crack at that because the tri you know the Tribeca <laughs> Film Festival for years? They've added they've added some yeah. game stuff into it this year, and the likes of like Kana Bridge of Spirits and Twelve Minutes and a few cool indie games are going to be presented there, and they're allowing people to sign up and join in to play these games via Parsec. So, and that's E three week too. But um, so I'll Ooh. be I, I say it's kind of my closest opportunity to give it a crack because maybe I'll be fortunate enough to get into some of these little demo opportunities via Parsec or something like that. I'm like yeah, cool, I can attend E E three without taking the risk of being shot. I tell you, you're gonna say E B. He, yeah, you sound like you're about to say EB. I'll go to Ted EB. That's not very far. I can go to E3 so without risking right. being shot in America. So that's that's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, so I, love, I love it. Virtual I love it when I hear that. That's the same. Yesterday, somebody's like, "Why do you want to get to America? You get shot." I'm like, "I'm a middle-aged white male. I'm not getting shot. You're not a target. <laughs> I know that sounds exactly. Yeah, that's like it's you know, sad. The, the beard. The, the beard, mate. He goes, "You're a bit of a wog," and I'm like, "Go to hell, many." All you gotta it's say a is sad reality, but you're right. You know what the defence is over in America is. All you gotta say is, "I'm white," and they're like, "Oh, cool." That's that's it. It's disgusting. But, but you yeah. gotta be careful. You gotta be careful of your name, right? And otherwise, they plant. What is it? What is how far they plant cocaine and. I don't oh, know, geez. guns and marijuana or something. What is it? I don't know. When they, like the, the Jefferson's, Jefferson's episode, and they're trying to frame oh, Michael Jackson, cool. but they can't. They can't frame him. <laughs> and on. Oh on that yeah, note, something about the kids. Yeah. 
Hi, I've been Ingrid. That's Ingrid. On that note, we'll wrap things up there. So uh, E3 is only a few weeks away. So like I said, we will do... Oh, shit. Something's happening again. No, nah, it's um, just in uh, honor of Mass Effect for this week. Oh. I'm keen to see what's going to happen this week. <laughs> Damo, you need to make sure you see this, mate. Um, so <laughs> it's a Mass Effect character that, that, that you created, I'm guessing, or just one you found on the internet? Oh, and on the internet. They get better. There, there are some great ones. <laughs> Please, stop. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah, Mass Effect's coming out this week. And like I said, we'll probably discuss uh, discuss E3 in far more depth in the coming weeks because the event is like a month from today, basically. Um, that's horrific. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, all the buttons down below, hit the notification bell, that way you're alerted to a whole bunch more, including... That's horrific. More what are you talking about? Player 2 plays, like Game Review Gamer School. Now, he looks like he could be from Despicable Me. Or um, ser- that's, was it Team Fortress or Serious Sam? Maybe. I don't serious know. Sam. I don't know. Uh, I patch, Sam more Player 2, uh, play 2 plays, like Game Review, Gamer School, and a whole bunch more. Visit the website, player2.net.au, for reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, links to the podcast series, Patch, the Player 2 Pixel Cast, and Dev Diary. We're on Patreon, patreon.com slash player 2 au kicking a few bucks, lower tiers, early access, higher tiers, monthly episode exclusives. And finally, there's Twitter. Damo, where can you be found? At, at Taco's Talk. Shepard, where can you be found? At Mado underscore Phil. Paul James Games for me, and we'll see you next week. I don't even know what to say. Terry! With Terry! <laughs>